What's up everybody, if you're just joining, we're gonna get started in a second here. Getting some supplies all set. I'm gonna be talking about, a little bit about footwear, anatomy, and design. So we can get, uh, the important thing about footwear anatomy is just so we can get a little bit of a common language around what we're doing here. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for joining today. What I'm gonna start off with today is a little bit of footwear anatomy. So every, every uh, product type, every category has its jargon, right? Everything has its, its little terminology. And you know, while it can seem a little exclusive at first, I think what's important about knowing that terminology is having a common language so that when you're talking to other designers or other people in the process, you can be having a, a conversation that makes sense, right? You can have a little bit of a, a shorthand between you um, and, and understand what, uh, what you're talking about. So I'm just gonna start, we'll warm up here with, with a basic silhouette in a basic term. So silhouette is, a, is a, a common term used to obviously describe just the overall shape of, uh, of the product. And what's, what's referred to when we say silhouette is, is often the type of shoe we're talking about. So like this, for example, this, this silhouette in particular would be a running shoe silhouette, right? Like most designers, terrible speller, so the word silhouette is a is a challenge. But I think I got it here. Right, but that, that running silhouette is gonna be very different than let's say a basketball silhouette, right? Which is gonna be typically a, not only a mid top, but gonna have a little bit less toe spring, which is another term we'll get into. Um, and have a little bit of a thicker toe box. Right, so that would be basketball silhouette. But obviously it would be very different than let's say like a, a, a women's flat silhouette. or even just all the different types of heel silhouettes. Right. So just this one basic word is kind of like the first, the first shorthand that you'll often see in the industry is like, what silhouette are we working on? So I hope that makes sense and is helpful. Let's, let's dive in a little bit deeper into a particular silhouette. Uh, and so what I want to look at right now is, is a running shoe silhouette and just dive into some of the, the, the terminology within that type. So the first thing that we're going to talk about once, we're, once we've decided on the silhouette, which is going to be a running shoe, the, the, the very next thing we're going to talk about is the last shape. So. The last is basically the foot form that goes inside the shoe that the shoe is built on. And they're, they're based on these very traditional concepts of, of what shoes look like. So they're actually not <laughs> super anatomical. They're, they're, they're kind of like a um, they're kind of like a mix between anatomy and what we as people think shoes should look like. So they're a little bit sleeker than a, than a human, typical human foot. And a, a running shoe, for example, is going to be sleeker than a basketball shoe silhouette. And that's just really based on our kind of cultural expectations of what a shoe looks like. 
And there's all kinds of, of little things that, that go into the last, um, like you'll notice, you know, there's the heel is going to be a little bit lifted from the toe and that's often called the, the heel toe offset. And if you drew this, this ground line, you'd notice the, the toe part actually lifts up from the midfoot right here, right? And so that's, this dimension is frequently called the toe spring. And just pushing these things a couple of millimeters can make a big difference in the way the, the shoe looks. So, you know, this offset is typically 10 millimeters, um, but, you know, if you lowered it down, it's gonna be this kind of flatter shoe. If you raised it up so that you could add more cushioning in the heel, you know, it's gonna kind of cant everyone a little bit further forward. This toe spring, designers often really love to exaggerate toe spring. It kind of gives the shoe a lot of direction to it. Uh, it. It also really helps when you're talking about the foot kind of running through a motion, right? And you think about rolling to your toes. So giving it more toe spring is gonna push that, that feeling in the shoe, that motion, uh, but it's also gonna make that motion a little less natural. So, you know, it's kind of like a, what's the comfortable spot there. And then there's tons of other very specific terms uh, when it comes to the last, like there's usually a dimension in here that's called ball girth, which is how thick it is through the ball of the foot here. Um, and all kinds of other little things that we won't, won't get into because I want to get to the shoe. But the macro thing I want you to know about when we're talking about any kind of shoe silhouette, the, we're going to be talking about the last first because that last shape is so important. And two of the, the most important aspects of the last when you're drawing a shoe is what the toe spring is and what that heel toe offset is. So if you're just joining, so far we talked about the different silhouettes and how first defining a silhouette is really important so that when you're, when you're talking to other people in the process, they know what you're talking about and what those specific silhouettes might be called. And then we started talking about some specific terms about the last, which is what the shoe is built around. But now let's start, let's start dipping in a little bit more to that, that silhouette. I'm actually gonna take my initial silhouette drawing just put it underneath here so I could trace up a few things. Just gonna, gonna make this nice with a straight edge. So you're gonna get a nice ground plane in here. So a lot of times when we talk about a traditional athletic shoe or a running shoe, we'll talk about kind of the layer cake of components. Uh, and that's because literally the components can kind of almost stack up on top of one another. So let's start from the, from the ground line and, and kind of move up to just kind of start talking about some common language. And some of these will seem pretty basic and then we'll move into some more specific things. So the first component we're gonna talk about as we start from the ground plane is the outsole. So traditionally on a, on a running shoe, the outsole is gonna be a layer of rubber that adds durability, right? So one outsole. And there are tons of ways to approach designing this outsole. You know, the traditional is just a, a three to five millimeter layer of rubber on the bottom that's compression molded. Uh, it can be split up into pods. The reason why you often see that on uh, a running shoe is because the rubber is, is heavy. So by breaking it up into pods and, and leaving gaps, you're reducing the weight. The, the smaller you make the pods, the, the lighter it is, but you're also losing traction because the rubber has that nice kind of grippy traction. And you're also, limit, you're also limiting the durability because the rubber is going to be much more durable. And then there's even different types of rubber that we can get into into the outsole. Like a, you might see like on a running shoe that the heel might be a very hard black rubber, and that is a, a high carbon rubber typically in the outsole. That's going to be much even harder and heavier, but very durable. So if you're if you're a marathon runner, you probably want to make sure that your running shoe has a piece of high carbon rubber in the heel here. Um, you don't see it in other shoes. One, it adds cost. Two, it adds weight. 
three, it can really kind of mark up kind of indoor surfaces like hardwood floors. So you really will only typically see that in a, in a performance and marathon shoe. The second layer up that we're going to talk about is the midsole. There, there are you know, tons of different ways to handle these. Some, some shoes don't have any rubber outsole and it's just a, a midsole that has a rubber content in the foam. So you know, there's always different ways to do it. We're just talking kind of in generalities here. So layer two, midsole. So the midsole is traditionally a layer of foam uh, an EVA foam, most most commonly, sometimes a polyurethane uh, foam, um, and that foam is going to give you cushioning. Uh, now, within the midsole, sometimes there are different components, like in Nike shoes, you might see an air unit. Um, in an A6 shoe, you might see a gel unit. Ironically, none of those none of those really cool uh, visual technologies actually perform any better than foam. Foam performs amazingly well um, because it's made up of tiny little air pockets. In an EVA foam, if you cut open a shoe, it's, you'll see all these little air pockets in the foam that compress whenever you take a stride and take a run. Now, so you'd say, why, well, why do companies invest so much money in these cushioning technologies? Now, the cool thing about foam is, is how well it works, but what's not so nice about it is that it breaks down every time you step on it those air pockets bounce back a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. So, you know, an average running shoe that's all foam, it's only gonna last a few months. But if you add an air unit or a gel unit, while it doesn't perform as well as the foam out of the box, what's so great about it is that it doesn't break down. So while the, the foam unit feels amazing, um, let's do this little two by two here. So this, is, this would be comfort in this direction time in this direction. So the foam might feel like amazingly comfortable out of the gate, quickly kind of drops off and then levels off like that. Whereas an air bubble might not feel as good as the foam, pure foam out of the gate. It's always gonna kind of feel the same. So it all depends on how long you keep your running shoes for, what purpose you're using them. If you're, if you're kind of walking or jogging and you're planning to keep that shoe for a year, Something with a cushioning technology probably is the right shoe. If you're just going to run a race in it, um, or or you know you don't mind replacing your shoes more often, then having a pure foam shoe would be more important. The third layer in the layer cake is called the upper. So the upper refers to all of the components of, of the shoe that are sewn or welded, all the soft parts basically. And those soft parts are actually stitched up flat. So when you, when you look at the upper, uh, it actually looks almost like a, a butterfly when it's stitched. It'll look something like this with all these darts in it. So this would be flat upper. Layer three, upper. Then that upper, that flat upper, will be stitched up the heel. So it'll look like, it'll look kind of like this for looking at it upside down. And then they'll stitch on a bottom to that upper with a, a very specific machine called a strobel stitch machine. So that, that bottom is gonna get stitched along here and this bottom portion is called the strobel. So once this upper is stitched up and the strobel is added, they'll put it on the last, right? So then it'll be on the last and then once they put it on the last, so it'll be like a nice hard thing um, to push against, now they can glue the midsole and the outsole to that and run that through a, um, a, some kind of a heat process to cure all that glue. So that's, that's kind of like the basic steps um, and the basic layers. Now within these things, there's, there's tons of different pieces of terminology. I'm gonna dive into just some of the most common that um, are on the upper 
that we often will talk about. So on the upper, it typically be broken up into parts, right? And so like, for example, if there's a, a part here, Do this. Let's just get a kind of a basic design in here. Nothing fancy. We're just trying to show some things. Okay. Just getting another quart of color here so we can see what the heck we're doing. So this part will frequently be called the quarter or the quarter panel. And that just refers to basically anything that's on the side of the foot. This part and the back will frequently be called the foxing. It can be a little bit confusing because in autoclave shoes, shoes like a Chuck Taylor, the piece that, that don't have a midsole, the piece that wraps around is called the foxing. But in a running shoe, this is sometimes called the foxing. This piece here that wraps around the toe, keeps the toe kind of nice and straight up. This is called a toe bumper. Sometimes it's called the mud guard, but most typically the toe bumper. And then oftentimes you'll see like a little dip in a toe bumper like this, and that's called the flex notch. It seems like such a basic thing to put this little V shape in the toe bumper, but it makes a huge difference. You know, this is, think of where your, your foot bends, right? It bends right here um, across this area of your foot called the the metatarsal heads, which you know most frequently is called the, the balls of your feet. Um, so you, you want to have these flex notches around where the balls of your feet are so that your toes can flex. You'll often, often also see those flex notches carried into the midsole, just alleviating a little bit into the, that foam. And this is also where you'll often see a break in, a, in the rubber itself. So now you're, you're creating this whole flex zone right here, right? And you'll sometimes see that carried over if the designer is good and knows what they're doing. You'll see that flex zone carried over into the bottom of the shoe. So let's carry that through. You might see a little something like this. That's a break in the rubber. Here I'm not showing the rubber breaking, but let's show it get like really thin. Sometimes you'll see these like very narrow bridges on the bottom in, in place of breaking up the rubber because every time someone has to fit or stock fit a separate piece of rubber, it, it adds um, a labor charge, it adds cost to the shoe. So sometimes you'll see these bridges between the parts so that it's one piece and it's a little bit more cost effective. And we had our, our high carbon rubber in the back here. So this whole zone is called flex zone. Moving up into the rest of the shoe here. So this would be the area where the laces would go. It's usually a little bit reinforced. Think of all the, the forces pulling on this area. So you, you'll typically see an extra piece either sewn or welded here. And this whole area is called the eye row for all the eyelets for the laces. This obviously tongue, that one everybody knows. And this area here where basically the eye row kind of continues around to the other side and where the tongue is stitched in, this is typically called the throat. So that's some, some basic, and there's a bunch of different terms for these throats. There's like a U-bell throat, a blucher. There's like all, all different ways to handle that that we won't get into. They get a little bit more nerdy and technical, but just gives you a little bit of a sense of the, the detail that somebody's going to. Well, we already talked about when we looked at the last, we talked about these important things, which were toe spring, We talked about this 
heel toe offset. Which if you look at the side of the sneaker, you can usually see that offset. You can see where that, that midsole gets thicker to accommodate for that offset. All right, so now we got some basic terminology down. Now we can do a sketch, right? I think oftentimes as, a, as someone who's designed a lot of shoes, I'll look at um, a young designer's sketch of a shoe and it won't accommodate for any of these things. I'll be like, well, where do the, how do all the pieces come together? And you could tell when someone just doesn't know um, kind of the components of a shoe. So this is why I think it's so helpful. Um, Hey, thank, and by the way, I just want to say to all the people that are joining, thanks for joining. I see Carlo Tem says, dope video. Thanks, Carlo. Uh, Ramonda, I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name right. Say you're a big fan. Thanks so much. I really appreciate that. I love doing stuff like this. I love sharing what I've learned. So now that we've uh, covered over some of the, the basic things that are going on, um, let's, let's dive into sketching a shoe, and, and I'll show how these things really affect what the shoe looks like. So I'm gonna get another nice clean sheet here. Don't be afraid to overlay your sketches, you know, like you can't get it all right in one sketch. I can't either. So, and I've been doing this for over 20 years. So there's no shame in like just getting out a nice new piece of paper and putting it over top of your sketch. So you can do a nice clean design. So everybody sketches shoes a little bit differently. There's no kind of right or wrong way to, to go about it. I like to just kind of start with the overall silhouette first. You know, obviously we know we're gonna be talking about a running silhouette, but I'll even just kind of sketch the overall outline of the shoe just as like a little bit of a starting point for myself. And I like to kind of let that kind of lead the way, if you will. So I'll be thinking about, well, what's that heel shape going to be? Like, maybe do I want something interesting to be going on here? What's the amount of toe spring that I want? How do I want this kind of um, vamp? That's one word. I for that's one term I forgot to point out on here. How do I want the vamp to kind of transition to the tongue area? Let's let's. let's Note that. I knew there'd be ones I would forget. So this, this little area in here from the tip of the toe bumper to the, the bottom of this throat opening, that is called the vamp. I have no idea why. I've actually looked it up before. I, I, can, I cannot tell you why that's called the vamp. It seems like such an odd word for it, but. So let's think about like, how do I want that shape of that vamp? Do I want it to be somewhat collapsed? Um, do I want it to be, you know, some of them could be almost a little bit negative. I'm gonna make this one like, it's a little bit flat, you know, almost to the flat to the horizon. And then I'm gonna have my tongue come up. And then let's get this top line in here. That's another, another one I forgot. So this, this line right here, frequently called the top line. Kind of a basic word for it. But that top line, you know, you can see this is, this is the shape that you're gonna see first when you look uh, on the shelf in the store, right? So that top line could be really important. Like, how distinctive is it? So, you know, I've given this kind of a, a pretty unique top line. So now that I have my silhouette all set, sometimes I'll just sketch in a little silhouette for the bottom view. And then I'll come back to that. And I'll do the same up here for the toe. You know, this view is, is, is frequently really important when you're thinking about a shoe because when you're thinking about a shoe, what view of the shoe does the person wearing it see? It's this view. 
So this is the view you typically see in the store or online, right? This is the view you're gonna see when you're, when you're looking at it, when you're wearing it. And then this outsole view is really important because there's a lot of technical things going on, but also industrial designers tend to really care about the outsole view. I remember I was hanging out, talking with my friend, uh, Rob Dolan, who's now VP of design at Nike, and we were, we were really discussing pa passionately outsole design, and our, our wives were hanging out with them, us, and they're like, who cares about the outsole? Who even looks at us? And it's like, I don't know, industrial designers do. So this view, let's just, let's just note these. This view is called the toe down. Not just the top view, called the toe down, because you're looking at the toe. This view is the lateral view. The lateral, lateral is just a fancy word for outside. It's the outside of your foot. The medial is the inside of your foot. And then this bottom view is, is frequently called the outsole view. So those are kind of three views that you kind of need to have to describe a shoe design. Okay, so now that these silhouettes roughed in, I'm gonna start thinking about what's going on in here. So I'm gonna start with this dividing line that divides the upper from the midsole. Frequently, this is called the, the top line of the midsole. It's just kind of like this is called the top line of the upper. So I, I wanna do something a little bit unique here. This is, you know, frequently this is a, a huge uh, demarcation of color. You know, the midsole will be white or a co color and the upper will be black or white or a color. So this, this line is a key kind of visual um, differentiator in the shoe. I'm gonna add a little flex notch here and then just let this midsole really taper out. So, and I've already got this kind of um, shelf here that I defined in the silhouette. So I need to decide how that shelf is gonna resolve itself. So what I'm gonna do is have that shelf kind of grow upward a little bit and then taper out to nothing. And I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have a couple of rubber pods that we talked about, but I'm not gonna put rubber on the entire outsole. So I'm gonna start with a nice pod back here because that's where your, your heel is, is hitting the ground. So that's frequently where you need the most durability. And the second area where you need durability is in the toe because that's where you're, you're pushing off. It's not as much wear going on in the rest of the outsole. Maybe we could add just like a little third pod right under the metatarsal heads. But you see we've got a nice little gap between these pods that's gonna make a lot of flexibility. And then I'm just gonna carve out a little bit of weight by removing this little bit of foam here and giving that a little bit of an arch. Okay, so now I've got my silhouette, I've got the top line of my midsole, I've got a couple of rubber pods defined. Now I could start to figure out how does that translate into the outsole? Well, let's say like, I wanna remove a little bit more weight from the outsole by sculpting this in. So this is the medial side, this is the lateral side. So this would be where your arch or your foot is. So this doesn't really contact the ground very much. So by adding this little sculpt line, I'm removing a whole bunch of foam and that's gonna save us some weight. Now I've got this pod that comes pretty deep into the heel and it wraps up over the side of the midsole. So it's gonna be doing something like this and then I have to decide how I want to terminate it. So I'm just gonna come straight across, or actually not quite straight, but at an angle across for this one. And then I've got two pods, this toe pod, and this one that kind of goes across the metatarsal head. So I'm gonna start with this metatarsal head pod, and I'm gonna have it actually get a little bit wider as it comes across. Uh, and that's because, right, like your, your big toe is gonna to have a much larger metatarsal head. That's called the first metatarsal head. And so it's gonna be putting a lot more pressure on the ground. And so I want a little bit more rubber there to, to prevent wear and, and give you more traction. And then our, our toe pod, I've come across like this. 
So that's just some basic kind of blocking that translates what I'm showing here in the sidewall. This is called the sidewall. More terms. I'm taking what's, what I'm showing in the sidewall here and translating it into the outsole. Okay, so let's continue some of this line. So we have this foxing, the area that's frequently called the foxing here. I'm gonna pull off of this midsole line and do a nice little piece of foxing. So remember when I showed you what the upper looks like when it's laid flat? Well, that's stitched up the back and so that's gonna leave a stitch line. So frequently you'll see a foxing piece of some shape back here, and that's gonna cover up the stitch line. And that's just a nice, you know, you, you can tell designers that are thinking about how the shoe is made and how it resolves itself three-dimensionally by if they're doing little things like that to, to really make the shoe feel a little bit nicer. And now this collar here, probably gonna have some foam in it. So that's why I'm showing this kind of just bulging out a little bit here. And then a lot of times you'll see a heel tab, you know, so you can help pull the shoe on. That'll be sewn between the lining and the foxing here. So a heel tab gonna be something like that. All right, you can see this is starting to resolve itself automatically. Once you understand, you know, the the shapes of the shoe, how things work, you see how designs really kind of tell you almost how they want to be resolved. So. Let's do an interesting quarter panel. Quarter panel is important because we're gonna be pulling, basically it's a piece of material that helps us to pull from that strobel stitch that's on the bottom all the way up through the top of the, of the foot. And it kind of makes it just feel comfortable. But I don't want it to be this big, heavy thing. So I think what I'm gonna do, let's see, let's come off of this flex notch. And we're gonna come up here my eye row and then just add a little bit of interest to the eye row here with some notches. And then let's see, let's have this just follow the foxing a little bit. And then I'm going to just cut out a bunch of weight because that piece of material is going to add weight. So I'm going to cut into it. So now we have a nice kind of framework that's going to help us kind of pull the laces nicely and add a few laces in. show where those eyelets are. Okay. And let's add a toe bumper. I'm not going to have the toe bumper come all the way back. I'm going to pull it off of this. All right, I've got the start of a side view here. Not the best, not the coolest shoe yet, but you know, it's a first pass off of our last. So I'm not gonna do the top view yet, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up another sheet and do a quick overlay, see if we can just improve this a little bit, make it a little sleeker, a little more interesting. So I'm gonna get my ground line in again. So I like where the I like where the midsole was going overall. I'm going to keep most of that. So since I want to keep most of that midsole, I'm going to start my sketch, my overlay here, with what was going on with the midsole. And sharpen that up just a little bit. So now I got this like nice crisp line coming out here. I'm going to lay this back just a little bit, this line, get it a little bit sleeker. Not a big fan of this notch that was happening here, so I'm gonna eliminate it. I 
just keep to one kind of simple four foot notch. But otherwise that's kind of getting pretty level there. Get my toe spring in. And get that nice line that goes from the vamp up to the tongue. So my, my top line kind of interfered with my um, quarter pan a little bit. So I'm going to bring that top line just back a little bit. There was kind of this, this kind of diamond theme started to evolve here. So I'm actually going to make that top line have just a little bit of a, a diamond feel to it. Okay. And let's get this nice heel line here. Okay, now I can evaluate where I was going. Let's say this foxing, what I'm gonna do is have this foxing, <laughs> how do I wanna do this? I have this foxing to kind of mimic that line again. Come back down. So you see now we have this, this kind of diamond theme is starting to develop. I'm actually gonna put this little diamond detail in here, just kind of pulling off that theme again, which just kind of started to evolve itself. This diamond, very balanced, makes it look very slow, right? Not, not really digging how that diamond and this diamond are working out. So let's see if we can just make something a little bit more interesting and dynamic happen here. Maybe this actually is gonna come up into that. Yeah, that's a little better. No pressure when you're designing live, is there? Again, that kind of diamond theme going. And I think what I'm gonna do in this quarter, instead of caging it back, I'm gonna have it be kind of open in the back. Yeah, I think that's gonna be better. Let's do that. Let's have it split here. So this piece is actually the toe bumper coming up and becoming part of the quarter. <laughs> Let's see, I don't want that. Sometimes I'll do these little ghost lines as I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do here. Like I have this line kind of go with that. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this line come all the way through the midsole. And then just finish that off there. Yeah, that's looking a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna drop some laces back in. Standard is usually five, six, maybe seven tops. Can be as little as three or four laces. And then you'll notice I didn't do any, um, I didn't break the tongue from the vamp here. And that's intentional. I'm just gonna let that be one piece, uh, like a sock or a booty fit that'll have a nice kind of single piece feeling along the foot. Add my pull tab back in, and then let's add our let's add our rubber pods back in. Let's do a little interesting here. Do something a little interesting. Need a little bit of the traction pop peaks up here. Let's say, and then we had our two rubber pods here, one in toe, and the other right along the met heads. I think I'm just gonna keep that flat to the ground this time. Okay, going on 39 minutes here. Let's pick up the pace and I trace up my outsole view again. It's 
So we had these different pods. One rubber pod, two rubber pod. I'm gonna change the sculpting on this just a little bit to kind of mimic that pod, just a little. And then we had this heel pod. Let's be thinking about some other shapes that come through here. Let's see. Well, we had our three little, four little things here. Maybe we actually even want to color block that. So now we see this, this block of color. Maybe that gives us that nice little hit of harder carbon rubber back here. Another flex notch here. And let's start working on the toe down view. After drawing shoes for so many years, you just kind of get these these silhouette lines become somewhat secondary. So the first thing I'm gonna put in in this toe down is the, the shape of this top line is very unique, right? So this piece comes forward, so it would be doing something like this. And then as they come down the sides for that diamond shape, it's gonna do something like that. And then it's gonna come back on itself. Now we had this toe bumper here. Maybe it does something just a little bit asymmetrical as we're going from the lateral to the medial view. And then we had those quarter pieces. Something like that. This will be, we're looking down into the shoe here and seeing the sock liner, another term, this, this uh, layer that goes on top of the strobel, frequently called the sock liner, sometimes called a footbed. All right, now we can start. We've got a nice overall design going, much, much improved from here, I think. Theo, thanks for joining, says this is great. Thanks for the props. Carlo, glad you're, glad you're uh, finding this useful. So now that I've got this silhouette and these different views drawn that obey some of the things that we know about footwear design, now I can start you know, just adding some color selectively. So what do we want to do here? Let's pull out some markers. What I want to do for this sketch is I just, I just want to add enough color so you can clearly see kind of the different parts and what's going on. I don't want to go crazy on it. I just I want, I want to show other people that I'm talking to in the process um, what I mean. So. Let's use that color somewhat strategically. I wanna kinda of show off some of these different components. Um, first thing I wanna do before I start showing colors, I wanna show just some overall form. So, you know, I'm gonna get just a nice light 20% gray marker here. Just adding some dimension to it. What I'm showing here is kind of that roundness of the last as it comes into the midsole and then how it rounds around the tongue and the same as it rounds around the heel. Since I know there's gonna be a little bit of foam here, I'm gonna do that so we get a little bit of a shadow here and the same around this detail I put in the heel. in the midsole here. I'm going to leave this this surface paper because that's kind of upward facing but I want to show that it's a little bit of a shelf. You 
see how it just, just with a few marker strokes, we're starting to bring this thing to life. I haven't really even done anything. Same on the outsole here. So this is sculpted away. So I'm gonna put that in shadow. This is gonna be pretty flat. So I'm not gonna to do too much shading across this, but you see how we're, as we're starting to get that, that heel kick here, you know, I'm gonna, I wanna show that. And I wanna do the same as we're starting to get some, some toe spring here. And then I had this little, these little notches here. So I'm gonna shade that just a little bit. Okay. So where do I wanna add color to this thing? I think I'm gonna start, let's see, let's see what this color looks like. Ash gray, kind of a brownish. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start by making this heel, this foxing, this very kind of warm gray. Maybe this is a suede or a microfiber. I'm just kind of filling it in right now. Just being careful to not go over the lines too much, but I'm not really doing it in any particular way. And I want this little, I, don't know, I want this piece to be, this little heel piece to be a color. And come in on that. I'm gonna translate that to the bottom view here. And we know we wanted this kind of strike zone to be more of a high carbon rubber. So we're gonna get a dark gray. Those high carbon rubbers tend to just be black because adding carbon to the, literally adding carbon to the rubber. So it's uh, hard to make it any other color. This, I'm not sure if I want to do this. I think I want to like make this whole piece of the eye row right into the midsole, also that orange, but it's gonna get, I might get a little too crazy. Let's, let's start with just making it a little bit of a gray. Let's see if I can get like a 40% cool gray or something. Here's a 50. Let's see how this looks. Still a little too dark. Getting this toe bumper, which flows right into the quarter and eye row. Okay. And then let's do, I wanna just do these pods in orange. Coming back. Notice how I'm kind of working all the different views at the same time. I like to do that. It just kind of helps me th keep thinking about this product in all three dimensions. I hate when I can tell, I can see a product and you can just look at it and just know like, oh, that was just designed in the side view or the top view um, because you could just tell that the designer didn't quite think about it all the way around. That just always annoys me, feels a little bit lazy. Doing the same here. Come back with our 40% here. Our 
slightly symmetrical toe. And we just see just a little bit of that toe bumper as it wraps up here. And let's say maybe the sock liner, we want it to be orange too. And let's say maybe this, this little detail that I added here, maybe this is actually just a welded little diamond that's gonna push down on the, the foam in the upper. So I'm gonna get just this nice little outline here. And let's repeat that. So, you know, again, you're always, always designing. So I'm actually gonna repeat that welded diamond idea. Here, it's like my 20%, so that's gonna make this kind of just pillow just a little bit. Yeah. Then we're, we're showing here that this lining is is an orange. You can see just. Typically, you'd see just a little bit of that lining. I'm gonna get a nice little secondary line here. Remember, our heel tab is stitched kind of in between the lining and the upper. heel tab is orange as well. So we'd see that heel tab back here. Darken this in just a little bit. Give a little bit of sense of weight to that. You know, it's, I don't come in with my dark stuff until kind of towards the end. Gives me a, a chance to kind of go over any little mistakes. You know, all the mistakes I made were, were pretty light. Don't be afraid to turn that page too, you know, like your arm can only do certain things well. You know what those things are and don't be afraid to, to turn the page to get the right line that you want. Um, let's see here. I need to add some, some laces in this top view here. So we got two going across this little piece here, and then we've got four going along the rest of the eye row. One, two, three, four. And I added this little diamond shape here. Hint at that, that view. Come back in with my, my juicier Sharpie. Add a little bit of shadow on those areas. Maybe let's, let's pick up that little, that diamond idea back up here at the top of the tongue. All right. Can 
kind of coming back with my, my newer Sharpie just to darken some things in here. I'm gonna hit this top line. And now that my markers are, are pretty dry in some of these areas, I'll come back in. It's just the same 40%. But because the marker is dry, you know, don't forget marker is a translucent ink, so we are going to be able to just kind of make it a little bit darker, even though it's just the same marker. And darken that edge a little, like just to show there's a little bit of a thickness. Do the same in the top view here. That same marker, but just we were able to add a little bit more dimension. The same ash gray back here. And let's see, I want to think a little bit about um, what's going on in the outsole here. So we need to, you can't just have these flat pieces of rubber, you know, they wouldn't provide as much traction as they could in, if there was some dimension going on here. So what I'm going to do, start working back into this. So I'm, I'm kind of going along with my flex notches here. And that's just gonna add another little edge. And maybe I'm gonna add another element here. So those elements are gonna help the rubber flex as well as provide a little traction. So I see I got these four lines coming in here, but they're not really doing anything yet. Maybe I'm just going to have them do this and then just kind of just kind of die there and I want to do something also with this, this area. So maybe I don't want to core this out just a little bit to remove some weight and add a little bit more grip. Okay, turn it into something there. Now that I got my ballpoint out, it's gonna come in and just, just tighten up some of these lines a little bit. Maybe show there's a little chamfer in the top here. Got this line that comes from this quarter piece right into the midsole. Not really doing anything with it yet, so I'm gonna add a little bit of a of a line texture in the midsole just to differentiate those different areas. Give myself a nice little detail to play with. Okay, not bad. And just kind of working the whole design at the same time. Okay. I'm going to add just a couple of little lines to show what the, the surfacing is doing here. So, you know, this is going to be coming down, right? And then this is a little bit of a shelf. So, it's gonna be coming out, and then this is coming back down. This is just to help describe some of those cross sections. Just lightly, don't wanna to go too crazy with it. Don't want people to confuse it with, a, with an actual detail in the design. I've had that happen before, where a product marketing person has thought that like it's just a little shading line 
was actually like a, a different panel. And he was like, where'd that panel go? I'm like, it's not there. What are, you, what are you talking about? And he brought out the original sketch. I'm like, oh man, that was just a shading line. <laughs> so you wanna be careful when you're, when you're detailing things out that you know, everybody knows what it is that you're talking about. Let's add some little bit of traction elements in the, the forefoot area here. These little depressions or raised areas would just, again, add a little bit more grip, traction, reduce weight. Hmm, let's see, and I got this line. It doesn't really go anywhere or do anything. Let's do this. diamond kind of thing going on here. Is this the best shoe I've ever designed? Definitely not. But, you know, I think a good exercise to show all of you, you know, some of these details, some of these this terminology we're talking about. Oops, I missed this heel tab. tab is usually a, a woven piece of webbing so showing that just a little bit and I've got these little diamond details here all right take my 40 percent again and just actually got a 50 percent here let's get this 50 percent on here Keeping it loose, you know. Bring it to just have fun with these things too. When we talked about this being kind of a probably a suede piece or something, so I'm just gonna kinda of indicate that just by again taking that, that ash gray marker and stippling it a little bit. Just to just to, to show that it's a little bit of a different material. All right, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is get white pencil here. Excuse the pencil sharpener. Just come in and, you know, these are materials, so they, they have a thickness. So I wanna show a little bit of that edge thickness. Camper around this bit here. Just kind of working back in some of these areas. Okay. Not bad, getting there. Last thing I'm gonna do is just kinda call out a couple little construction and, and material details. So we talked about that being microfiber this being high carbon. This detail in the heel is welded. Yeah, not too bad, everybody. Oh, one last thing I wanna do, we talked about this being just kind of an all mesh upper, so I keep these little material swatches so that I can use them to um, get a little texture with. So I'm gonna take an indigo blue pencil here and I'm gonna put this underneath and 
just kind of transfer a little bit of that texture through. Just, you know, telling everybody like, hey, this is mesh, not leather. This is some kind of a textile going on here. I don't need to do the whole thing. I'm just kind of doing where it's in shadow. Do it back here in the heel. All right, sweet. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, you really want to know whatever, whatever you're working on, it really helps to understand what all the different components are, whether we're talking about a piece of consumer electronics or a shoe or a watch and having the right terminology so that you can have an effective conversation with the engineers that you're working with. Super helpful. Um, understanding you know, some of the basic, um, category terminology is, is really important so that you can be taken seriously and you know you're, you're calling the right components by the right name um, and it's just it'll just help having in having a conversation in, in communicating your ideas and that's that's what we're trying to do right that's what the whole purpose of a sketch and exploration is, is just to, to explore and communicate thoughts and remember like you don't have to get it all done in one sketch I mean I started with Remember, we started with this silhouette sketch, right? And then I did this sketch to just kind of explain some of the parts to you all. Then I did this terrible sketch uh, to try to get a design down on paper, but you know, wasn't very good, but maybe there were some interesting elements there that I could pull forward. And then we ended up with this pretty nice, decent little running shoe sketch. Actually, you know what? Let's do a little textile on this top view too. This is the problem. Once I start streaming with you guys, it's like, can't stop, you know? Gotta keep, keep going, gotta finish it. Oh yeah, that, that textile there, that helps a little bit. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to just kind of take it one step at a time and, you know, don't beat yourself up. If you did a sketch and it's not very good, well, try to analyze it. Try to look at it and be like, what's wrong with it? Is it the shape and proportion. In this case, the overall shape and proportion was pretty good. The internal shapes and proportions, not that good. But maybe there was this idea with these kind of diamond cutouts and I liked what was going on in this midsole. So all I had to do was put this underneath and trace up again, get the parts of it that I liked traced up and then try to fix all the parts of it that I didn't like. And when I'm working on, and when I'm working on a project, you know, I might do this 10, 15, 20 times, just so I can get to three or four concepts to show a client. And that's, that's okay, that's the way it goes. All right, everybody, thanks for, so much for joining. As always, like and subscribe. Please, please share this if, if, you, uh, if you like it, like I'd love for you to share it and to get more people watching these, um, that'll be really cool. So thanks for joining, I'll try to do another one soon. Until next time, keep designing.